Um, how will Ethereum's price move after the Shanghai unlock? We're gonna take a look at Galaxy Digital's take on this and kind of take this assessment and see, okay, um, how likely is this assessment to be correct? And then also, um, how uh, if that is correct, then how would that affect the market? Um, so let's jump straight into it. Um, and the one thing um, to show here that I, uh, when we're talking about this subject is uh, the Ultrasound Money website, right? Ultrasound.money um, is uh, awesome um, here for Ethereum, basically showing you how Ethereum has been deflationary um, here since January 15th, right? Meaning more Ethereum supply is getting taken out, right? Than is being created. Uh, and that supply change 155 days since the merge is 33,000, almost 34,000 ETH uh, gone from the market, which it means, you know, Ethereum, uh, if we look at its chart, right, had its low here in June of last year, right, and then had another uh, move in November, but did not go lower, um, mainly because of the merge uh, and that uh, ETH supply being taken out, right, held up the price better than Bitcoin because we saw Bitcoin here uh, essentially hit a low all the way in uh, November, right, um, whereas Ethereum had its low here in June. So that's the difference here with all that supply being burned. Um, basically, Ethereum is... Um, you know, hold going to hold up better than Bitcoin. And event, you know, it's not outpacing Bitcoin right now. Usually Ethereum waits to outpace Bitcoin until Bitcoin gets close to its previous all-time highs. So you wouldn't expect Ethereum to outpace Bitcoin um, too crazily until uh, about a year and a half from now um, after the ha Bitcoin halving, actually. Um, so this is why kind of taking the Shanghai update into account is important um, because uh, if there's more supply in the market, that could, right, tank the market for Ethereum. So let's take a, a read here again. Uh, this is um, from Galaxy. So uh, how could the Shanghai unlocks affect the Ethereum price, um, they ask, right? So um, what's their take? Ethereum's next upgrade named Shanghai is expected to enact sometime in early April 2023. Actually, it's looking like March, um, but uh, it can, it will be adjusted potentially. Um, the upgrade will uh, enable fully full staked ETH withdrawals on the Ethereum network and unlock consensus layer rewards earned by validators on the Beacon chain to date. Uh, a major question facing investors is the amount of Ether supply that will unlock and what its impact could be on the market. This note focuses on projecting and predicting the likelihood of ETH sell pressure because of the Shanghai event. So take um, some of it with a grain of salt because they are using real data, but at the same time, they're putting their opinion onto it, right? So some facts that are key to understand uh, this question include just over a million in ETH rewards will become liquid at the Shanghai upgrade um, over a four to seven day time period. This amounts to approximately 0.82% uh, of total Ether supply, right? So less than 1% of its supply will even be able to become unlocked um, or liquid. Uh, approximately 1,138 validators um, have already exited the validator set, um, which is 0.2% of ETH validators, uh, amounting to approximately 36,416 of the principally staked ETH waiting to unlock in the Shang in Shanghai. 20% uh, of the exited validators were slashed and kicked off the network basically for uh, performing improperly. So this number represents a significant number of validators that were forced to exit because they didn't do their job. Um, these validators are currently not validating and they are not earning any rewards. So that takes um, basically uh, supply that can be unlocked out as well. Um, we expect the number of exiting and exited validators to rise nearer to uh, when the date for Shanghai is finalized. That is when Ethereum core developers uh, decide on an APOC uh, number for the upgrade. Even if a validator wants to exit, um, it makes no sense to enter the queue now because it is unclear when withdrawals will be enabled. Um, so until there's uh, clarity and more certainty around the exact date and time, validators will likely keep operations running and earning rewards instead of foregoing rewards for an indefinite period. Um, so that makes sense. Um, broadly, our expectation is that most, most validators on Ethereum will not unstake at, at Shanghai for several reasons. The cost basis for most ETH validators, um, for example, the ETH USD price at the time they stake the beacon chain is above the current exchange rate, right? Um, uh, thus, most validators have no profits to be realized uh, by exiting the validator set. Um, you can see that right here, essentially. Um, I think I can zoom in a little bit. Um, but yeah, you can see that here, right? 60% of all state ETH um, was locked at the current price or higher, essentially $1,600 or higher. So only 40% of the ETH that is staked 
right, would be in profit. And even then, right, um, we saw yesterday with the Mt. Gox hack um, return of money later this year, a lot of people um, from that want to receive it in Bitcoin, right, because um, they feel more bullish than bearish over the next few years on Bitcoin. So also here, people who have enough faith to have staked ETH, right, even this 40% that are in profits, they more than likely, right, um, will probably hold for uh, a more longer term than just taking profits um, at a short increase. Um, let's see here. The community of users that have committed Ether to stake on the network even before withdrawals uh, are enabled skews uh, to the long-term Ethereum bulls. Um, the presence of liquid staking derivatives like Lido staked ETH has given those users who do not want to exit the validator set a functional way to do so in a relatively liquid manner. Um, the yields from staking are higher at uh, present than yields in decentralized financial applications. Um, and they are also comparable to yields in traditional fixed income markets, right? So the yield is good and it is real yield as well. I think Ethereum's yield is probably the highest in terms of um, uh, real yield, not just coming from like inflation on coins. Um, so I think uh, a lot of validators are, are very, very happy to hold that. Um, even though most validators will not, uh, likely not unstake at Shanghai, we expect many to take some profit from the rewards they have accrued from the beacon chain. On average, validators have earned roughly two ETH from the consensus layer rewards on their 32 uh, ETH principle, which is the minimum, right? So um, we uh, conservatively estimate that validators will sell up to 50% of these rewards, um, but project amount of ETH sold in the market at various assumptions below. Um, so for the valid, oopsie, my, got that, that scroll wheel is a little sensitive there. Um, for the validators that have already exited, these entities may restake through a different staking provider or choose to sell their ETH completely. Um, given that it is unclear who the, who the entities are behind these exited validators, we err on the side of caution, assume hundred percent of staked ETH from exited validators will be sold off shortly after active, uh, the activation of Shanghai. So pretty conservative take there. Um, the following analysis does not include assumptions about validators that will exit, sorry, that will enter the exit queue at Shanghai, namely validators operated by Kraken, which recently announced they will be shuttering their U.S. Opera uh, staking operations. So we know they have to uh, basically get out. Um, however, for U.S. customers that were staking through Kraken, there is no strong reason to believe these users would immediately sell their staked ETH once uh, they are deposited back into their Kraken accounts. Um, yeah, I would say they probably would, or like they'd try to take it off Kraken, so they might sell for a short period of time and then go find somewhere else to stake. Um, so I kind of disagree with them there. Um, below, we calculate the amount of spot ETH and its uh, USD value to be sold under variable conditions, assuming the fixed amount of ETH that will be unlocked immediately follows uh, the activation of Shanghai from partial withdrawals um, is uh, 1,034,469 ETH. Uh, and from withdrawals um, is uh, 36,416 ETH. Um, so they highlighted these over here, right, um, to basically show you those numbers. Um, and so they expected USD value to be sold at Shanghai in their estimation, right, um, uh, is about a million dollars, right? And so that could fluctuate in terms of how much ETH um, that, that could be, um, as well as dollars there. So um, I would take, you know, some of this information here with a grain of salt, but it is actually probably the best data that I have seen out there um, uh, showing this information, but I can't zoom in uh, really enough here to show it quite properly on, I think, most uh, mobile devices for you guys. Um, but, because I know most of you guys watch the show on mobile, but um, if we assume that the validators, so I'll just read it here for you because it's a little bit uh, more clear. Um, if we assume that the validators will sell 50% of their staked ETH rewards, um, not their principal staked ETH, we expect that that and you can see that number up here, right? So this is their guesstimation, but you can probably you can take a look at this chart a little bit if you want to try to figure out uh, other possibilities. But we expect they expect um, 553,650 ETH will be sold um, if their assumptions above were correct, which I would say mostly are, right? Um, and they're relatively conservative as well. So even the the part they got wrong with Kraken. Um, you, you would basically be like, yeah, that's fine because they were conservative on the other bits. Um, amateur, amateurized over seven days, this amounts to approximately 1% of uh, daily ETH volume, um, including spot and perpetual futures volume of selling per day um, for a week. Um, depending on the risk environment broadly and overall liquidity in Ether, 
during the Shanghai upgrade, um, expected in early April, we view this amount as ranging from inconsequential to slightly bearish for ETH. Yeah, I would say we see, you know, it, and this is why showing this at the beginning was so important because you can tell, right, the amount of ETH um, that's basically becoming unstaked and that would potentially be sold is really not that much. Um, so compared to, you know, how much has gone off the market already. Um, so, um, yeah, it's a bit bearish, but another view is that the Shanghai upgrade going smoothly is broadly bullish for Ethereum as technology and thus bullish for ETH. So the, the way to look at that is, right, JP Morgan, right, even came out and said, I think it was about a month ago, they said during uh, the Shanghai upgrade, they expect, you know, maybe a slight bearishness in the short term, but long term it is bullish for Ethereum because um, now when you see real ETH or real yield here on ETH, um, even banks want to get involved because they know um, it's a solid um, place to park your money um, because it's a solid protocol. Um, so they're basically bullish on that tech and will use it more. So actually more money would be attracted in the long term or even the medium term, more money would be attracted to ETH if this update goes through. Um, so I think, you know, a lot of people, you know, have been overly bearish on the Shanghai update, but it is uh, still, you don't want to just like poo-poo it, right? You want to just be like, okay, it there is some, you know, price damage that can be done from that, but it's not going to be, you know, so crazy, right? Um, so let's see here. Okay, so they just basically um, are talking about some of the unstaking mechanics here. Um, let's see, is it worth reading? Two queues run side by side? Yeah, we don't need to go through all that. But if you want to um, basically go through all of the, the uh, nitty gritty details here, you can you can come uh, over here to galaxy.com and, and look at their research. Um, but I, I would say I mostly agree with this. I would say it's about 90% um, correct overall. So I'll throw this in the chat for you guys. Um, but yeah, definitely go and look at that. But I just thought, um, you know, it's definitely good to take a look um, at that view because uh, essentially, um, you know, uh, it's not that bearish, right? If we're not that bearish on... Uh, what do you call it, native crypto uh, stuff, then also we're not that bearish on the Fed stuff, then that means we have kind of full go uh, to essentially be bullish and we get a, a Ethereum update that's just gonna make the protocol better. Um, so it's kind of just a win across the board here for crypto. And then we have fucking a lot of money coming in from Hong Kong, aka China, right? So, I mean, what is there not to like about buying the dip going into the current cycle low? I, I mean, the next one week, you know, um, anybody who hasn't gotten into the market already, right? It's just the most fantastic time, in my opinion, um, to be getting into the market. So um, if you kind of have questions on like, you know, um, details of that as you want to do it, I would recommend to go into uh, the Citadel there. Um, we can help you guys who are looking to buy um, over the next uh, week to 10 days, jump into the Citadel, and we'll have a lot of people to give you um, really good information about um, kind of where the market's at and stuff like that.